Welcome back to the Bernard Lee Poker Show. We are continuing to talk with people at the World Series of Poker to kind of get their opinions about how the transition has been to Bally's Paris. And this is a great person to talk with, a good friend of the show, and someone who won a championship all the way back at Binion's in 2004. None other than the 2004 World Series main event champion. You know him by Fossil Man. We know him by Mr. Greg Raymer. Greg, thanks for joining us once again here on the Bernard Lee Poker Show. Of course. Anytime, buddy. You uh, obviously, as I mentioned, played at Binion's. You were there uh, the 17 years at the Rio, and now you are here at Bally's Paris. You've, you've even been quoted yeah. as saying as either I'm dead or in the hospital. If not, I'm yeah. playing the main event. So yeah, you've obviously still ask me that all the time. They're like, are you going to play the main event this year? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah like, unless it's literally impossible. I've even made it clear to like my daughter, if you're getting married, not you that, don't not those schedule two weeks. your wedding on top of the main <laughs> event. And right. uh, I don't care. Like, oh, that's the only week you guys could get the church. Yeah. Enjoy getting married without me. I will not be there. <laughs> like you knew about this. Now, if well, she scheduled it a year in advance and they changed the main event to August and it overlapped her wedding, then I'd cut her a break and I'd skip right. the main event. Right, right. But right. It, but if she scheduled it like, you know, first half of July, I'd just be like, Yeah, you knew better. Right. <laughs> so Let's talk about it. What, how do you like the transition over from the 17 years that we spent at the Rio over mm -hmm. to Bally's of Paris? Uh, I was not excited about it in advance, mm -hmm. but it's turned out to be pretty good. Yeah. Um, I was very concerned that like trying to come and go was going to be like drive most of the way there. And then spend an hour trying to get into the parking garage and get parked. Right. Because there would just be this crush of cars showing up. Right. And, and I was worried about the same problem leaving at the end of the day, that it was going to take me an hour to get out of the garage. And I have right. not run into that problem yet at all. I don't know if that just means a lot fewer people are driving themselves to the mm -hmm. World Series. Right. And, and lots of people have always stayed at various like caesar's hotels here in this section of the strip and then they're trying to get shuttles and ubers and stuff over to the rio and now they can walk right and so maybe that's what's going on is everyone's just in walking distance now and so it hasn't been a concern um so i'm pleased with that how um, is the parking in the sense of spots have you not had any issues with regards to that either uh, i was lucky enough to get like a has to park in kind of a special area got it, got so it, i don't it. know how yeah. bad it is but to be honest there as i walk from like where we park to the elevator i see empty spots and it's like sure. the first floor right like right. you don't have to use the elevators and i'm like anyone could go park there as far as i know so i sure. see spots all the time and it's yeah. i don't i haven't heard anyone complain about it so i think yep. the parking is good in terms of like the food options there's more you know options than there was at the rio I, personally though i don't really like to eat in any casino anywhere anywhere at all mm -hmm. so i you know bring stuff in my poker bag and i just eat something light you know like the big thing for me for several years now has been you go to the store and they sell you the little box and it has like a little tin thing of like tuna or chicken salad and then like right. a little plastic wrapped like six crackers yeah yeah and so you're like yeah, you just spoon the tuna salad <laughs> onto the cracker and you know and some jerky protein bars stuff like that dried fruit yep. i just eat that and then you know get a real meal after we're done playing for the day because i just don't and i don't want to deal with like crowds and sure and trying to rush through an actual meal in a sit down place. How have you find the bathroom issue? I know that sounds so silly, but anyone who's ever yeah. been at the Rio totally understands what I'm talking I about. Don't bathroom think issues were such a big deal there. What do you think about I, here? I, I have yet to wait more than like four minutes to yeah. get, you know, like once I arrive at the men's room, I don't think I've waited more than maybe three or four minutes to get to the stall. Yeah, you know, it, it, it is amazing so. how different, I mean, 
And to me, and you tell me if you agree or not, is, is that because it's right near the casino, like where the real ballroom and, and convention center was, wasn't close to the casino. It was all the way down at the end of the hall in the back of the casino. The Paris ballroom and the Bally's ballroom, once you come out of it, bang, you're right at the casino. So there's a lot of places where you can go to the bathroom for the casino. Those bathrooms in the have, convention I've centers used, are so I've used much the bigger. the convention center ones, never had to wait, really. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, and, 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 and the other thing is, if you, I'm staying at Bally's, you can walk right back to your room. I've walked from the yeah. Bally's poker room or the, 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 the tournament area to my room in yes. about five minutes. No, the, the, you, you, hit the, uh, you hit the hotel yeah. elevators right before you get to the casino and it's a yeah. hundred yard walk maybe to that. Exactly. So exactly. if I was staying at Bally's in that tower, that's absolutely, I wouldn't even go to the public restroom. I would go to my room, you know, fill up my soda, yep. you know, kind of a thing, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, but I never stay in the hotels for this long. I mean, when I travel everywhere else in the country, I'm usually in the casino hotel. And if it's a poker room, like if I go to Texas and they don't have a hotel, you know, then I'm at some regular hotel a mile or so away. But uh, I'm here for seven weeks. I want like a real place with a kitchen and stuff. Like had dinner with my really good friend, Vince Lepore last night. And we, he came over here and I made my famous Korean meatloaf. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, and I have an oven and, and a fridge and a freezer, and so I actually cooked real food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, and that's what I want is is that kind of a place to stay for this long for a week. I can be in a hotel room, but you know, as we are ending this show for the Bernard Lee Poker Show, last week uh, we had and sorry this week we had a unfortunate um passing in the world of poker someone that's very dear yeah. to you someone very dear yeah. to me i'd love to spend just a few minutes and kind of talk a little bit about him we're talking about rich corbin rich corbin was an integral part of poker stars and the poker community for decades um, back in 2004 for you, 2005 for me, he was with Poker Stars, and and I communicated with him on a regular basis. And and I'll tell my story about what he means to me and what he meant to my career. But give, give us a few minutes of uh, a few moments and, and memories of of Rich and and just uh, you know kind of in memory of yeah. him. I mean, I I got to know Rich because like you said, he worked for Poker Stars, and Dan Goldman was like the head of marketing, and and Rich was his right hand man. And the two of them are responsible for most of the great things that Poker Stars did as far as what the public knows, you know, things, the events, um, you know, they were a big part of creating things like the EPT and the LAPT and all that and making those events happen, making them a success. You know, Rich spent tons of time down in South America trying to figure out how to get 20, 30, 40 poker tables someplace and not have to pay like import taxes because <laughs> they, they wanted to charge more on like the import tax. So it was like double the price of the, what he paid to buy the table in the U S or something. Right. So he, yeah, but he had to figure all those things out to make the event happen. So it would work for all of us. So, you know, Dan, I think was a little more known to some of the regular players um, than Rich was, but Rich was the one that got um, just a lot of those things to actually happen and six, to happen well, yeah. so that you didn't notice issues and problems. And so, but he was just, everyone loved the guy. He was the greatest guy. Um, yeah. He was probably just one of the nicest, friendliest, kindest people, you know, person I've ever met anywhere in my life. Uh, I don't know any negative stories or comments about him at all if someone ever got mad at rich he probably bumped into them by accident or something and <laughs> and they were kind of you know overreacting to, to get mad at him about it um, I, i've never heard anyone say anything about how he like wasn't always kind friendly polite you know and he's gone out of his way to help people all the time uh one time during the series i spent most of the summer living at his house Oh, wow. He had a house here on the west side of town, like kind of halfway from the strip to Summerlin. And he loved that house. And uh, he wasn't even going to be there most of the time. And, and like 
Terrence Chan was in one bedroom. I was in another guest bedroom. And uh, he, he and his wife were there a little bit over that period, but not a lot. And uh, I mean, my best memory of him is actually that summer at one point when he and Kay were there and I had like woken up and came out to like the kitchen to fill up my soda because I don't drink coffee. I just drink soda all day. And, uh, and I look out the window and there's the backyard with the swimming pool and he and Kay are in the pool and, and he's goofing around and he's just got this smile on his face. Mm -hmm. And, and even though, you know, he was, you know, in well into his sixties at this point, just the look on his face made you think that it was like, you know, like a three-year-old playing. With <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. just that total joy on right. his face. And, and that's the image I'm going to hold on to the most. Yeah. I, I, he was such a good guy, such a great man. Um, like you said, he was really the behind the scenes person for poker stars and I have to say, I not many people know this story. Um, uh, they don't, but uh, the specifics behind it. But Poker Stars, when I uh, qualified through Poker Stars in 2005, I um, you can see the emotion that Greg has. Uh, it is if you're watching here on YouTube. I mean, it's just a very emotional for all of us because he was such a great guy. I had a deep run in 2005, as many people know, and he had asked me, would you mind writing about it? Just kind of write about your experiences. And I think he just really meant like, you know, give Brad Willis like a page or two. It'd be kind of neat. We'll put it up on Poker Stars blog. But it was really kind of a cathartic experience to kind of get it all out because my wife almost died giving birth to our child. She had a thankfully benign tumor. Like there were a lot of things that almost didn't happen. And it was such an unbelievable kind of experience to obviously get that deep and, and almost win it, basically, um, that I, I had a lot to say. And, and it became like an eight part series on Poker Stars. I think you can still find it online. And back then, remember, the Internet wasn't as big as it is now. There was no social media, et cetera. So it became as viral as viral can be at that time. And in all honesty, that was the launching pad for my media career because ESPN contacted me. The Boston Herald contacted me. Eventually, Card Player contacted me. Yeah. It led to my, it, my, my radio show. And that was all because Rich asked me to do this. And, you know, you know Rich always jokingly used to say to me, like, I started your career. And, and he's 100% right. He really did. And, and, oh, and the thing uh, is, if, 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 he did, if he knew this was going to be this great thing for you, and if he knew that it wasn't going to do anything for him, he still would have helped you do it. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Like he, yeah, he, yeah. He, I mean, obviously, you know, he's asking you to write this up and it's a good marketing thing for poker stars possibly, but that's like secondary that's right. accidental. Like he, if he thought like I can do this and it will help you, he's going to do it. Right. Um, you know, he probably is one of those guys that like, you know, gave a hundred bucks to some of the, poker players out there who were always bumming money and broke he, he's right. probably the guy that was like yeah i'll just give this guy a 100 bucks and you know i can afford it so even though he right. knew better so to speak he's going to do right. it anyway right um you know he's just i mean he's definitely just one of the nicest you know best person that i've almost i can't even think of anyone who i would could say like oh this person is nicer than rich right like they're just a better guy you know a better person you know not limiting it limiting it to men i mean just you know he's just always you know wanting to help you right right well it's unfortunate. Unfortunately, this is the times where we've unfortunately had some memorials here on the Bernard Lee Poker Show. And I really wanted to uh, spend a few moments uh, to talk about Rich uh, at the end of our show this week. Um, Greg Raymer, I really appreciate you coming on and talking about your thoughts of the new location and, of course, talking uh, stories about Rich Corbin. Absolutely. Glad to do anything for Rich. So glad I could put a little bit out there that might, you know, contribute to his memory. Right. 
Greg Raymer here on the Bernard Lee Poker Show, and, and, and hopefully you got kind of a, a sense of what the move has been from the Rio to Paris Ballet. Really, overwhelmingly, people were, I think a lot of people were skeptical, and I think overwhelmingly it's been very positive overall, and uh, you know, hopefully it just gets better and better with any slight issues that there might have been, aka like the Bally's air conditioning or things of that nature, but overall no, those are minor happens. things yeah minor things and i think it's it's worked out great and uh, uh again uh hopefully you enjoyed the show everybody and i want to obviously once again rest in peace rich corbin we really uh will miss you and uh thank you everybody for joining in and as always may you always go in with the best hand and may you never get unlucky good night everybody also, if you are enjoying these videos, please do not forget to like and subscribe down below, and you will get notified of all the videos and all my interviews as they come up. Thanks again, everyone, and have a great night.